this thing on? Hi, my name is Lauren Ramlin. Uh, most people call me Ren. And I am a first year PhD student in the Biological Engineering Department and the Media Lab here at MIT. We are in the modern era. This is a time that has been defined by an explosion of technology. The device that you're watching this on right now is a screen. Screens are everywhere. They are in our homes, in our cars. They're on our fridges now, our toasters. You can even find screens on pregnancy tests. The 21st century is defined by these technological interfaces. Screens have become an integral part of modern life, and with it came an opportunity. On December 10, 1993, the company ID Software released the video game Doom for MS-DOS computers. In the game, the player assumes the role of an unnamed space marine, commonly referred to as Doom Guy, to fight off hordes of demons emerging from a portal to hell on Mars trying to take over the solar system. As riveting as this storyline is, what brought Doom to its prime was actually an unexpected application. On August 12, 2006, YouTuber Kevlar Gorilla released a video of Doom being played on the Nintendo DS. Shortly after, more videos arose of Doom being played on strange hardware, such as iPods or graphing calculators. In the coming years, the trend of Doom running on everything, henceforth referred to as Dero, would become a sought-after accolade for any display technology. To date, Doom has been run on a variety of surprising devices, from ATM machines to MacBook touch bars, pregnancy tests, and even Legos. Some modders have even figured out a way to run Doom inside of Doom itself. With Doom's supremacy in the electronic sector secured, it was time to imagine new mediums on which to run the game. The 20, with the rise of the biotech sector in the 21st century, some clever scientists started imagining ways to integrate biology with Doom. In August of 2023, the YouTube channel The Thought Emporium released a video proposing a method by which neurons grown on a chip could be trained to play Doom. This idea was based off of existing neurons on a chip that had been trained to operate robots or play the game Pong. By encoding aspects of the game as cellular signals, the Thought Emporium devises a way that one could train cells to play the game. However, I argue that teaching cells to play Doom is not the same as running Doom on cells themselves. Which brings me to my final project. One bit pixels encoded in E. coli for the display of interactive digital media. Or better said, they ran Doom on a cell. Inspired by the design of an E. coli digital display from the Voigt Lab in 2020 and the simplicity of a binary pixel screen, the theory is that cells can be used as the pixel illuminations instead of traditional electronic lights and induced to fluoresce via a reporter. By growing engineered cells in a 1,536 well plate, cells can function as a programmable display screen. To create my system, I based it on a plasmid from the iGEM registry for standard biological parts. In this plasmid, there's a gene for green fluorescent protein, controlled by the P-LUX promoter. On the same plasmid is the LUX repressor gene, which is constitutively, or constantly, expressed. On its own, this plasmid expresses LUX R, which represses the output of GFP and stops fluorescence. In order to turn the system on, we use the molecule acyl homoserine lactone, or AHL. AHL can bind to Luxar and prevent it from repressing GFP expression, functioning as a not-not gate and resulting in a fluorescent signal. To model this computationally, you have to describe the different species in the model using ordinary differential equations, or ODEs. After writing out the ODEs that describe the changes in the concentration of each species over time, I can write some fancy Python code that simulates this genetic system and plots the concentrations of our molecules over time. After modeling this for a single system in Python, the next step was to combine this with Doom. 
To combine the genetic system with the display of Doom, I first need to take the frames of Doom and compress them down to a 32 by 48 array the same size as our microwell plate. After this, I use thresholding to determine which pixels are on and which are off in the binary display system. I then take this on-off array and use it as an input to determine which of our simulated cells receive the inducer AHL. The result is simulated cells that fluoresce in the same indices as the compressed Doom frame. Simulating this system over time, I find that it takes approximately 70 minutes to achieve peak image display and 8.3 hours total to return to the off state and then load the next frame. With this simulation, I'm able to calculate approximately how long it will take to run the entire game of Doom on cells. My final conclusion is that to run Doom on cells, it would take about 600 years. This is an amazing finding because it means that we are a small handful of generations away from the peak of human engineering. And so, with synthetic biology utopias on the horizon, we lie a mere half millennium away from the greatest Dero feat yet, where doom and life become one. We got it? Right. I think we got it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's nobody here. I'm filming this on my iPad. Bye.